So where are we headed? We're heading to Grand Teton National Park. It's about an hour south of Yellowstone. We are in Wyoming, which we didn't get to. We didn't see where we actually crossed into Wyoming, but it was somewhere in the north end of the park. Okay, let's get going, Grand Teton. Here we come. As we crossed into the Continental Divide at the southern end of Yellowstone, we were captivated by the breathtaking beauty of the pristine deep snow. So we're on our way to the Tetons, but this is just fantastic here. We had to stop. The snow here is just like powder. I've never seen or felt this sort of snow before. So if I just pick some up. It's so soft and powdery. Great for a snow fight. <laughs> and just behind all of that snow, there's a little creek that it just looks frozen all the way along. I don't know if it's frozen solid deep, but it's just frozen along the top all the way along. Just, this is one of those pristine little amazing stops. Apparently, there's a lake out there somewhere. God, it's so soft. So the snow, when you touch it, you can hardly feel it. It's like cotton wool. But then when you pick it up, you can feel the cold and realise, yeah, it's cold. It's really cold snow. And underfoot, when you tread on it, It makes that creaky sound. And we're at the Continental Divide and the elevation is 8,391 feet. So for some perspective for the Aussies, Kosciuszko is 7,300 and something feet. So this is how deep the snow drift is. We'll be standing on the road. So it's, I don't know, at least a metre, I'm reckoning. That's one huge frozen lake. That's how cold it is. The one hour drive turned into a longer journey as we found ourselves constantly drawn to the breathtaking snowy landscapes of Yellowstone. Nevertheless, we eventually managed to tear ourselves away and continued our journey towards the Grand Teton National Park. Okay, we finally reached the Grand Teton National Park. It's normally only an hour drive, but we really took our time because that snow was fantastic, don't you think? We couldn't stop stopping. <laughs> it was so good to see, like the frozen lakes, the mountains, the roadway, the elevation, we certainly don't have in Australia. So we're gonna head into Grand Teton, we're gonna do the loop and see the typical sites, share them with you and then go into Jackson, Wyoming to get some food and have a look around in there too. Come on, let's go. The Grand Teton National Park encompasses a breathtaking mountain range, with Grand Teton being the highest peak. It is an iconic destination within the Rocky Mountains, drawing millions of visitors each year. One of the first places we stopped in Tetons, just to have a look at the view, this is one of the first views that we've seen. Absolutely next level stuff uh, from Yellowstone. So yeah, this is just totally worth it. Such a great place. While driving along Teton Park Road, we discovered a serene Catholic chapel 
nestled along the shores of Jackson Lake. And regardless of your religious beliefs, this beautiful location is bound to inspire some deep spiritual reflection. The Teton Park Road is a remarkable 33 k's or 28 miles stretch that takes visitors on a scenic journey along the base of the mountains, leading them to iconic destinations such as Jenny Lake. The road is enhanced with numerous turnouts or pullouts or pit stops or whatever you want to call them, each offering incredible vantage points that leave a real impact on the hearts of those who stop and admire. The Tetons offer a wealth of activities. In winter, the park is cherished for its stunning ski slopes. And during warmer months, visitors from far and wide engage in epic hikes, boating on the lakes, camping, or simply relishing the joy of being there. We stopped in at the Jenny Lake Scenic Trail. We've seen these signs everywhere. We haven't seen a, a bear yet, uh, but I did talk to the wildlife management guy who was just at the, um, down the road. And he said this place here is crawling with bears, elk, uh, moose, all that sort of stuff. So hoping we can see something like that here. thing that I really like about this whole area from the moment we first got out of the car in Montana even to hear the the fragrances of the trees the pine there's the fragrance of sagebrush it really is pleasant it's beautiful um, Australia has beautiful eucalypt smell but the the fragrances are very different and, and as Australians coming here it hits you as soon as you get out of the car because of our limited time frame and having travelled from Australia, we chose to spend the day visiting the best stops in the park, taking short walks and truly immersing ourselves in the natural beauty of this place. Yeah. And as a passing note, check out the innovative campers they have here. We saw a few like this. The old barns and houses on Mormon Row are a photographer's dream, but it is a crowded area, so be prepared. You really need to do your research when you're coming to places like this. America is busy, the national parks are busy, this is yeah, this is the Memorial Day long weekend, so there are people out everywhere. We watch channels like We're in the Rockies, Adventures of A&K and Through My Lens, and they give great information to help you do your research on these places. It pays to get early in the morning. We, we stayed at Yellowstone, so we couldn't get down here early enough in the morning, but it pays to get early in the morning if you want to go to Mormon Row because the crowds there are insane. You need to wait for lulls in the crowd if you get there in the middle of the day like we did. I actually took video on my iPhone. It was the easiest thing to do there. We're heading into Jackson Hole now and we're going to grab some lunch and have a look around Jackson Hole because I think there are some great things to see there too. During the Memorial Day long weekend, which marks the beginning of the summer tourist season, the town of Jackson was bustling with activity. After driving around several blocks, we finally found a free parking space. And as we strolled through town, we noticed an open air concert being set up in the park. Oh, and by the way, these antlers are shed naturally each year and they are collected for this display. No elk are hunted or harmed to make these. Having spent the past week in quieter areas, 
the energy and the liveliness of the town really made an impact on us. Made it into Jackson's Hole, we've come into a Mexican sort of place called Code Red, and we've got nachos to share. Yep. Great, thank you. What's up? Let's dig in. After lunch, we looked for a grocery store to stock up on some supplies. Jackson is a pretty little old western town to visit, but it is very busy. Jackson Hole is a busy little place, especially on this weekend, the Memorial Weekend. Lots of shops, lots of touristy sort of shops. Um, we had some really nice lunch, which was good. And to see the antler arches was really cool. We wanted to see those for a long time. Uh, overall, nice. It just looks like a country western town with a touristy twist on it. We, uh, we were lost for directions on, a few times. So we asked a few people on the street if they knew where uh, the shop was that we're looking for. Three of the four people we asked were Americans and were not, not from this area, so they didn't know. And the other guy was an Aussie named Steve, um, and he didn't know where the shop was either. So we kept walking around until we found the shop that we needed to get some supplies. And if you're out there watching Steve, g'day mate, good to catch up. And then we saw our first moose. Such a beautiful, graceful animal. There was no shortage of bison here, and we soon came across another herd grazing on the roadside field. The Tetons are an awe-inspiring sight. Despite spending only the one day here, we have no regrets. We are grateful for the chance to witness such breathtaking beauty in person. And as we journeyed back to Yellowstone, we again found ourselves pausing at numerous snowy turnouts. Words cannot fully capture how deeply we valued the beauty of these places. We arrived at the Old Faithful Inn just as the sun was setting. After struggling again to find a parking space, we made it just in time to witness the eruption of Old Faithful in the beautiful evening light. The crisp air enveloped the fountain, shrouding it in a veil of mist. Yet, even in this cold evening air, the sight was still awesome. And with no bustling crowds because it was late in the day, it was the perfect conclusion to a yet another incredible day in the American Wild West.
stay tuned. In our next episode, we continue part two of our time in Yellowstone National Park. Until then, take care of your mates.